Hey guys, it's Chris once again, and here we are with uh, some solder stuff. Here we are with the Gotex that uh, we're going to be working on today, and we're going to be putting Flash Floppy on these Gotex. These are blanks that I uh, showed you in the mail time video, and they have like screws for mounting the sides. They are pretty plumbed. Um, there are no studs for the Amiga, but that's fine. Now what we're going to need to do flash floppy are some pin headers, so I picked up a whole bunch of pin headers. We only need uh, a five row, so what we do is, uh, I already have one that's out, I'm going to be doing both. So we just take these and we count all five, and then we kind of give it a snip to break it off at the five mark, and we just need to remove one quarter pin. So you have just five on the top row and four on the bottom row. With that, we have our pin headers. Now we're going to be doing both of these drives. And what you're going to need to do is download some software that I'll link below. But I prefer to use the FTDI programmer. Uh, this was like $5 on eBay. They're great to have because they can program a lot of things. And it just has some very simple on the bottom. You have a, a transmit, receive. Um, ground 5 volt plus 3 so it's it's very uh, very simple it comes with all the leads first off to get cracking we need to open up a floppy drive and here's the inside of a GoTek drive it's super simple you can pop all this stuff out if you want which is what I'm actually gonna do and sit it down the table um, this is the model without the power light. You can get the power light ones up here. Some of them have them, some of them don't. You'll know if you have a real GoTek drive because it'll say GoTek system on the bottom. Um, some of the Chinese clones won't have them. So what we're gonna need to do is solder these pin headers in and they're just gonna go literally right here like this. And I'm gonna hold them together with a piece of Captain tape just so I can get to the other side. Since I bought like all this captain tape that I never really used that much. On the GoTek itself, there are a bunch of, of pins. So they are labeled uh, starting from the top here. It's J5, JA, JC, JB, S0, S1, and M0. You're going to notice a lot of these are similar configurations to various floppy drives. Um, you hear about the S0 and the S1 for the Amiga configurations. Um, right now it's in its default configuration on the S1. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook up our programmer um, to only a couple of these lines. Now you don't need all of them. You only actually need three of the bottom pins, but I always solder them all in. And so in your bag you're going to get a little jumper. And before we hook all this up, so I have, I have uh, five sets of wires. So I'm going to use my white and black and I'll use my reddish and my blue. Your colors may vary but what you want to do is write them down. And you're going to need a transmit and receive which I label uh, in the pins here. So in your pins, the top pins you just soldered on, we're going to put a jumper over the first two. So step one is install the jumper. Now mine is labeled J3. But the first two pins here, we're going to install that jumper, okay? And now we have a transmit and a receive. So transmit, I'm going to do white. So we're going to plug the white into transmit. And I'm going to plug my black into receive. Now I have two more here that I have to hook up to the 5 volt and the ground. So I'm going to use red for 5 volt, which is the very end pin. And I'll use blue for ground. How's that? So it looks like this for me. So I have my 5 volt, skip a pin, my ground, and then nothing. I'm not using my fifth wire. So now that gets me to the uh, USB programmer. And this is just a simple FTDI USB programmer, serial programmer. Um, we're going to hook the wires up the same way. So we're going to use our uh, 5 volt is, of course, red. And my ground is my blue. And you will recall on a second ago, I set my white to be my uh, transmit and my red 
oh, I'm sorry, my black to be received. Whoops, I just knocked these off. Since I'm using white for transmit, well, transmit on the programmer has to go into receive because you can't transmit to transmit. And then my black will go into transmit because my black is receive on the, the on the the GoTech itself. So if you have a brand new device, you're going to see this remove protection. So what we're going to do is we're going to click remove protection. Wait until full erase. The device will be reset. Okay. All right, the target is now readable. Click next. So you're going to see this line of devices here. These are your tracks. We're going to say next. And I already selected the flash floppy uh, for my desktop, which I stuck in one of my directories here. Here it is. And uh, so you can download flash floppy. I'll link the description below. And we're going to click next. And I selected the uh, HEX file. Now it completed. It's verifying the download. All right, so I'm going to format this drive. Fat 32, wow, 4096 bytes, uh, 16, quick format. Okay, gosh, that was like a pause weirdness. All right, so. So on your flash floppy thing, you're going to have, when we go into the HXC compatible mode, we go to Amiga, we copy the autoboot.hfe, and we copy the hdxsfde.config, or hxcsdfe.config. I don't think you need to copy the copying file, but I'll copy the copying file too. And this gives us the track zero bootloader for our GoTech. I'm not going to do anything special, but I'm going to drop it. Since mine is on DF1, uh, or DF0, I'm going to use this one on DF1, since this is already set for DF1. If you, if you want this to be your DF0, all you have to move is from S1 to S0. So here we are. I'm going to do the double mouse button trick and I'm going to load the drive that I just put in in the GoTech. Now this one of course has the flash floppy. Track 0. We're going to hold both mouse buttons down. Track 0 is selected on the GoTech itself. So I'm going to choose boot options, DF1, use, and then boot. And you're going to see that this is going to go to zero in a second and accessing. We're going to get the track selector here, okay? So it's reading the config and you'll see these are the ADFs that I copied, but they're not selected. If you're screwed up, you can hit help and it tells you what to do. But we're, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to choose re-kick and I'm going to choose slot number one. Then I'm going to choose a blank and I'm going to go to slot number two. Amiga OS 3.1, I'm going to choose the install. Then I'm going to choose work. Then I'm going to choose, what is it, uh, locale. Save it. Locale. And then six will be fonts. Whoops. Fonts. 7 will be storage, 8 extras, F9 to save, and now I'm going to reboot again with the selections made in track 0. Now, if you want, you can tell it to boot with a certain card, um, like you can change the color with F2, so watch, escape will make it nice and bluish, Amiga, red, purple, green. This is a nice color. Save that config. Um, let's see. Save and reboot is 10. Yeah, F3 is settings. You can tell, in settings, you can tell it not to, uh, right, okay. F10, saving and rebooting. Double mousing. Boot off of DF1, use boot. New version of Flash Floppy, check us out. The 
tracks are shown on the digital display. I was wondering what the hell this was. These are the heads and sectors that the disc is reading, and it's reading and write access. So the crazy numbers you're going to see, which you can set in the settings, are the tracks that the ADF is reading from. So that's new to this version of Flash Floppy. Pretty interesting. So let's see where we get on this slow booting turd. And there we go. We are back dropped to Workbench 3.1. Yep, 4042. Yeah, this always says it on the uh, Vampire. So now we could actually switch discs, and Workbench 3.1 is going to stay in there, and you'll see there's the locale. Now we can double click on it and access it, and there we go. Pretty cool. So we're going to power this down. We're going to hook up the second GoTech unit that we flashed. Boot options, DF1 use, boot. But it is uh, it is booting. Here we are on install 3.1. So it's reading its stuff. Pretty cool. Thanks for watching.